Welcome and thank you for joining us. My name is Scott Barr. I'm the Director of Network Services for Engage Incorporated, and I'm going to be your presenter for this session. Thanks for joining me today for a presentation of uh, Introduction to Microsoft Office Communications Server 2007 R2 Daily Use. First, let me tell you who Engage Incorporated is. Engage Incorporated is a Microsoft Gold Certified ISV, integrator and cloud hosting provider delivery Microsoft Dynamics XRM and CRM, Unified Communications, SharePoint, Business Intelligence, Silverlight and Surface, Geospatial and e-commerce solutions. Our solutions, whether on-premise or in the cloud, support both commercial and public sectors. And now a little about myself as it relates to Microsoft OCS. Again, I am Scott Barr, and I'm the technical lead for communications-related products and services provided by Engage Incorporated. I've been involved with Microsoft Exchange since version 4.0. So it goes back to the 90s and gives you an idea of how long that I've been involved in IT. Of course, that includes the entire ecosystem of Microsoft servers and clients required to support Exchange along with many more. My inception to Microsoft Office Communications Server actually began with its predecessor, Live Communications Server 2005. That was also my introduction to Voice over IP in general. We've integrated LCS 2005 with Microsoft HMC 3.0 and Siemens OpenScape to provide hosted communications, hosted unified communications. We've since moved to the current version of OCS 2007R2 and away from Siemens, but we're still using HMC in its current version. So let's go ahead and get uh, started with the demo. First thing I want to show you is this is the Microsoft Communicator Client, Office Communicator Client. This is 2000 for 2007 R2 version. And over to the right here, we've got the Microsoft Communications Web Access Client. Now, either one can be used to initiate communications. And the one that we most often use with Engage is the full version of the Microsoft Office Communications Client here on the left. And the purpose of showing you the Communicator Web Access Client on the right is to show you some communications between the two in real time. Also, I wanted to show you that it does not only work with Internet Explorer, it also works with uh, Firefox, and it also works with Safari. And it can work with a, a, a Mac OS client using Safari. So in its most basic form, Microsoft Office Communicator, or MOC, as I'm going to call it from here out, is going to be used for I am in presence, mostly instant messaging and presence. And that's the most basic form of communication. So I can start a, a uh, session with myself, actually, using both the Communicator client and the CWA client. You can see the toast pop up in the bottom right where I've initiated communications from the Einstein account to my account. And I'll click on that to open the window in CWA. And you can see the real-time communication between the two different versions of the client. Of course, that's just me communicating with myself with two versions of the client. As you can see in the background, there are a couple of other users who are actually on the system that I can communicate with from the two different uh, separate sign-ins. Real quick, let's focus on the client. I'll push this off to the right. When you first sign into Office Communicator, by default, your contacts are not going to show up. You have to add your contacts, and you'll generally get your, your contacts from your Active Directory that you're logged into. For instance, if I type my own name in and let it search, you can see that it's searching a list of names here with the first name, Scott, and it found mine, and I'm actually a 
uh, Office Communication Server um, user, so it shows up with presence already. And then from there, I can add that to my contacts, but since it's already there, that option is not available. Or I could choose a name that's not already there. Here's a demo account we've used in the past. Now see that I've already got that too. Let me remove it from the list and then I'll add it. And that user is added to the contacts list. You can also create groups if you have a lot of different people you communicate with. And you can see that indicated over here, the CDBA client, which is my normal client, that I have one for, say, a network services group, a company group, uh, another company group, um, a couple of other company groups. Something else you'll notice in the CWA client are these stars to the right of the names or to the right of the status. The stars indicate that I've got them tagged for alert status. So if their alert or if their status should change, then I'll receive an alert. So if any of these uh, tagged users change status while we're in the session, we'll most likely get a pop-up down here at the bottom right indicating that there's been a change in status. Now, most often when we communicate uh, within Engage, most of our communication is going to be uh, just with instant messaging. There are times that uh, while we're doing an instant message that we need to actually talk to one another, we can escalate an instant message. For instance, I'm going to choose Robert here since he's involved. We'll start an IM session. And so he's there. We've established an IM session, but if we chose to speak to one another, and I'm not going to actually do this, but I'll give you an indication of how it works to escalate the voice. I would simply go up here to the, to the uh, top left of the window, and I would click this icon to begin a uh, communicator call session, which is basically me communicating voice over IP with Robert and vice versa. Now, there is an opportunity when you communicate like this, that you can actually have it reach out to a different number. You don't have to uh, set up the session with only voice over IP. If you have voice integrated, and we do, then you can actually use another device like a cell phone or a desk phone. Or I could just send a message straight to his voicemail by clicking the voicemail uh, link and just leave him a message if that's what I choose to do. I'm going to close that session. A couple of things to remember about etiquette when using an uh, instant messenger client, such as Mott, is to do your best to let people know what your status is. So currently you can see that uh, my status is indicated by this jewel here, this jelly bean. And these are the choices you have because this meeting was actually scheduled. My status changed automatically based on my Outlook calendar, so it shows that I'm currently in a meeting. Now, can you see? You can see over here to the right in the CWA client that my real uh, login under Scott Barr, I actually manually set that to busy, and I put a note indicating uh, what I was doing at the time, and this gives the other users or the other uh, people that I would communicate with in the office, an idea of what I'm doing and whether or not it's a good time to try to instant message with me or communicate with me. So to not, uh, right now it would not be a good time since I'm uh, in the process of conducting a webinar. But I could change the status very quickly to do not disturb for that account so no one tries to communicate. And what that would do is that would prevent anyone from communicating with me until I change my status back manually. So if someone attempted to initiate contact with me, and I'll do that from here, I get a message that says the person doesn't want to be disturbed. 
says, do you want to send anyway? And I'm going to cancel because I don't want to disturb myself at the moment. <laughs>